Hey everybody, I'm Ted from Tabex. In this tutorial, we are looking at the Arena plugin for Rust. More and more information is coming out about the Rust Nexus system, allowing you to in-game teleport between servers. So I'm expecting more and more people to offer things like events or other things to do inside of those clusters of servers. Last tutorial, we looked at how to set up your own racetracks. This tutorial, we will look at events using the paid arena plugin. Since it's a paid plugin, I do want to say this is not a paid promotion. All the links will be in the video description. You can see that the arena plugin has some required dependencies. These are listed up here. These are the image library. This is a plugin API. We don't have to do anything with this. It's just something that the plugin uses. The zone manager, we will use this to specify where our events are taking place. This can either be anywhere on the map. For example, you can turn specific red towns or parts of red towns into arenas. Or if you have your own custom arenas, you can of course use that as well. We are using the spawns database. We will use this to specify where the players on both teams spawn. And for certain game modes, for example, capture the flag, we also specify where those flags are. And then lastly, rust kits. Per event, we can decide what players should get for clothing and weapons. This is done using Rust kits. If we scroll down, you can see here it says it's built into three pieces. So we have the arena, the arena user interface, and also the arena statistics. And on top of that, every event is also its own individual plugin. So you end up with a massive list. These at the bottom are the four dependencies that we just listed. Everything else is the arena plugin with its user interface, statistics, and all the game modes available. Obviously, I will not set up every single event in this tutorial. I will run through the whole process, starting from creating the zones, creating the spawn files, and also creating your kits for the events. We will then create the event, give it a test run to see if everything is working, and then I'll show you how you can use Tabex to give access to all events or only certain events, hopefully allowing you to quickly set this up on your own server and offering it to your players. Obviously, my server is running. It's completely updated. And if you look at the mod manager, we can see that UMod or Oxide is installed and the Chaos Code extension is also installed. Then inside of the plugins folder, there are a few extra plugins in there, but all the plugins that I showed earlier are in here as well. And also we use the permissions manager because this just makes, this just makes things a lot simpler. So with that all set up and everything on the server and ready to go, I also made myself admin and I also connected to my server. So then when we do slash perms to open up the permissions manager, let's go to groups and then let's go into admin. We will then see all the plugins that are installed. Let's just go down the list. First of all, for arena, make sure we are admin. Let's go back, go into kits, make sure we are admin as well. Let's go into spawns. There are no permissions, so that's good. And then lastly, let's go into zone manager and then let's do grant all. It should do everything, but I like to go through the pages and just double check that everything is granted. So we done zone manager, spawns, kits, and the arena itself. And we made sure that we have admin permissions. If we do slash menu, we can see all the different game modes that we have installed. And then if we click on one, so let's say free for all, it will tell us that there are currently no active events. Top left, we have leaders, admin. Top right, we have return. That only applies if we are actually inside some folder or menu. And then top right, we have exit. Obviously, if you don't have the proper permissions, the admin option is not available. By default, you can already click on leaders for seeing the statistics or leaderboards. Personal statistics will show the player its own statistics. Then we have the global statistics and also the leaderboards. Since I haven't played anything yet, there is no data. It's a pretty intuitive menu and it should be self-explanatory for players to click around. So let's go into the admin menu. Let's create a event and let's see what kind of options we get. Let's look at free for all for now. We then have to complete this list to create a event. So the three things we need to create first before we create a event is the zone, the spawn file, and also the kits. Let's do that first. And then let's go back to this menu and create the free for all event. So let's first of all, create our zone. I'm going to use this island just to keep it simple. Low entity count should be good performance for people. A lot of fights are happening in these kind of areas, little hills with some rocks, some trees should be good to practice. So let's go into the zone manager and let's look at the commands. First of all, I'm going to position myself in the middle ish. And then let's do zone underscore add. You've successfully created a new zone. 
So indeed, let's edit the zone. You can now see when we edit the zone, you can see these lines appear, this blue-ish sphere. And I hope this comes across on YouTube. It just disappeared. So we are inside of the zone and we do zone underscore edit. You can see it appears again. If you are not inside of any zone and you do zone underscore edit, it tells you you must enter the zone ID first. If you're inside of the zone or inside of any zone, it will automatically edit the zone that you're in. So we see the size of the zone. That's a lot of S's. I clearly want to make it a little bit bigger. So I think we do slash zone size and then between quotes do the X, Y, and Z. Let's just test. So it says size set to 100, 100, 100. And you can see it's not a sphere anymore, but it is a square. It is indeed way too high. So we need to lower that and we need to make it slightly bigger. We don't have to be too perfect. Uh, zone size and then... 200 uh, it doesn't have to be that high so let's do 80 and then let's do 200 now that looks pretty decent it's not perfect because this side is a little bit cut off but on the other sides it's it's pretty decent I, I want people to run towards the middle anyway and not really stick on the sides of the water so this this will be fine for now of course you can spend way more time making sure that everything is exactly positioned how you want to. Once we have our zone, we can decide the rules inside of our zone. So we do zone flags to open up the flags editor. These are rules. So you have to decide what applies to your event and also that location for your event. You probably want to eject sleepers. So if people disconnect or leave, you don't have someone sleeping on the floor and people start trying to loot it. And on the website, you can see exactly what flag does what. This is going to be a lot of reading and a lot of thinking the first time, but it's pretty self-explanatory. And once you've done it once, hoping that everything goes well, you don't have to do it again for that zone. If you have to do it again for every zone. So yes, this is a lot of work. A very important one is undestructible. If you enable this, buildings should not be able to be destructible. If you use your own arena building something like Fortify, aka using actual building blocks from Rust, please enable this. Otherwise, if you have some sort of explosive ammo, rockets, or something inside of your events, you will only be able to run it once. You have to set up everything again because your arena will be destroyed. Please turn on Undestructible. So let's click on Exit. So we have our zone, we have our flags. Let's create our spawn points. So once again, we go to the website and we look at the commands. We are going to say spawns new to first of all start making a new spawn file. We then need to think what this spawn file is for. In our case, it's a free for all. We only need one spawn file. If you're not sure, you can always just open up the menu. Let's go into admin. Let's create a event. Uh, let's dispose. Let's, for example, look at where's capture the flag. We need a team A spawn file. We need a team B spawn file. So you can see we need two. So if you're unsure, just open up the create event menu and see what exactly you need for your event. So in my case, we only need one spawn file. Then we're going to say spawns add, and I'm going to copy this because we're going to do this a few times. It also saves where you're looking at. So don't spawn people like this. Make sure you actually give them a way to look at when they spawn. Let's move around a little bit and let's make like three or four spawn points. Normally, probably would make a little bit more. But since we're just demonstrating, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have a few spawn points. So then we can do slash spawns safe and then the name. So I'm going to call it free for all one. So I know exactly what spawn file this is. And then it says four spawn points saved to free for all one or FFA one. So then the last thing that we need is a kit. So let's do slash kit. So let's press F1, go to items. And let's get ourselves the item that we want as a kit. Okay, so let's throw this away. Let's turn on our bunny suit. So I just spawned in a stack of a thousand arrows. And then as you can see, I just dragged down a few stacks of that. So this is my kit. Then we are going to do slash kit and click on create new. So I'm going to give it a name, a description, and also going to say is hidden and then click on copy from inventory. And you can see it copies it over from our inventory. Let's click on save kit. So we should now be able to create our event. Let's open up the menu, go into admin, and then let's create 
a event. Okay, so I filled in most things apart from the most important ones. So I gave it a name, a description, and I also set the time limit in seconds. So this is five minutes, 30 kills, only one round to play. You probably want to change the minimum and maximum, of course, depending on what, you, what kind of event you're running. I only made four spawn points, so I'm only going to say maximum players four. And I set the minimum to one because I'm going to be joining it in a second. Otherwise, you probably want to have at least a few people join before you start a event. So you don't just send someone to a arena by themselves with nobody to shoot. You saw as a optional dependency, you can use server rewards or economics. I did not install these as a reward type. I have scrap. Let's see if it even gives me any other options. Yeah, it does, but I don't have those installed. So I'm going to leave it on scrap and the win amount is 10. You can also set different amounts for a headshot or for a kill. I set them both to one. We can set a custom permission to join this event. Only players or groups with that permission are able to join this event. So you could create some sort of VIP event. And then you could use Tabex to give people that permission or even better, add them to a group that has that permission once a purchase has been made or a package has been claimed. So as a permission, I'm going to say test free for all. And I don't know why I spelled it like this. Let's do it like this. Event icon, I'm going to leave it blank for now. Zone ID, let's select. We only have one zone. Once again, you can stand inside of your zone and do a zone underscore edit, and it will tell you the ID of the zone that you're editing. We currently only have one, so I'm just going to select that zone. Spawn file, it should give us a name. Yes, so free for all one. That's why you want to give it a proper name. So if you have 20 things here, you should know exactly which one is which. And then as a kit, let's select our free for all kit, which is our bow bunny kit. We also have the option for a class selector. If we scroll down, I think there is a screenshot somewhere. Yes. So when people die, they get this menu. Depending on what kind of event you're running, you might want to offer them different kinds of classes. Once they are in that death menu, they can select what class they want to respawn with. And all those classes are once again, just you setting up kits and saving them and adding them to your event. Since we only have one kit, I will leave it disabled for now. Close event on start means are people allowed to join once the event is started. For free for all, I'm just going to leave it open and people can join and leave when they want to. So let's try to save, successfully saved. So then going back to the events, if we now click on free for all, we can see we have our test one. Currently the status is open and we can click on view event. It will tell us the name, what type and all the information that might be interesting for us to see if we want to play this event. It will also tell us that it's a VIP only event. Something I forgot, but as a little side note, make sure that your permission has arena dot in front of it. So let's save. And now if we go back to our permissions manager, go into arena, you will see that that custom permission is here. So we can now grant this. And now if we open up the menu, go to free for all, view the event, instead of saying VIP only, it will now ask us if we want to enter the event. So let's enter event. And then once it starts, you can see that we automatically get our kit exactly how we set it up. In the top right, we get a nice HUD. You can see as well, if we try to run outside of the event, it says you are outside of the playable area, return immediately or you will be killed. Okay, so then we can just run back into the zone and everything is fine. At the bottom, you can see as well, type slash menu to open the event menu. So let's do menu. And here we can leave the event or we can cancel. And we can also just do slash leave to leave the event. Before we do that, you can see top right. It's also the information that we've set. And you can see as well the players. But currently, of course, it's only me. So let's leave the event. That's all working. We then get teleported back exactly where we were. Just to see it in action, let's create another kit. So I'm going to throw out the bow and then take out the crossbow. And I'm going to make another kit. So kit, create new. Same thing as before. Give it a name, make sure that it's hidden. Copy the items from inventory. This time we have a crossbow and then we can just save the kit and go back. So now we have kit FFA. I should have probably called it bow FFA, but okay. And then we have cross FFA for crossbow FFA. Then let's go back into the menu again and edit our event and then say use class selector. And you can see here it says kit S for multiple. So we can select multiple kits. So let's do the crossbow as well. And then let's go back. You can see now it says multiple selected. Let's save. 
and then if we go into the event and join it because we didn't change anything you can see your dead select your class i'm not sure why it's changed but doesn't matter it's clearly do you want a bow or do you want a crossbow let's take the crossbow auto respawn is disabled let's just click on respawn and here we got our different kit so let's then take a look at tabex how we can use it to give that permission once a package has been claimed or a purchase has been made so what we can do is we can go into the permissions manager and we already have a vip group so let's click on this and then go into arena and then make sure that that vip group has the free for all one permission now we can use tabex to add a player to that group once a purchase has been made or a package has been claimed inside of tabex let's go to our packages you can either create a new package in my case i'm going to edit the package that i already have make sure you give it a name a description make sure you set a price then as a deliverable select game server commands we have to select our server and then at the right we can add our command when the package is purchased we want to add a player to a group so how we do this is oxide.usergroup add then the name of the player and then the name of the group in our case we have the id variable if we click on help on the right and scroll down a little bit you can see that the id variable will get the primary ID for that game type. So in our case, this will get the Steam ID from whoever is logged into our web store. So ID will automatically turn into the username. And then we want to add them to the VIP group because that is the group that has our permission. Hopefully this gives you enough information to set up all the different kinds of events that you want. If anything is still unclear, of course, feel free to leave a comment down below. Hopefully this was helpful as always. Thank you for watching and good luck with your Tebex store.